My opponent is the one who... Let's go with the Carol Con. Why not? He's the one who guessed the number eight. All right, so will we have the... Yes, we will. So it's the Carol Con Exchange Panov Bodvinik. I've played this a lot. It's Knight C6. It's one that could really go right into an ending. Knight, knight C6, Knight F3, Bishop out, and Queen B3 line. Grabbing on B7. But uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go that direction. Just going to go be more reserved here. Bishop G5. Huh. Bishop E7 takes... Hmm. One thing I need to be a little bit concerned about is uh, this potential structural change. C5, so... Hmm could do a counter pin have an absolute pin on the knight this is maybe could regard as a half pin but okay candidate moves include bishop here bishop here takes those are just some rough thoughts um well, let's just uh let's let's break the pin how bad can that be right <laughs> come on you just developed and you broke a pin you're doing beautiful things Simple, simple and good, hopefully. All righty. So what what should white do? Develop C5? Hopefully not stream snipe. <laughs> Don't listen to the stream. I could use stream tactics if that happens. It would not be the first. You know what I'm not going to do? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Fill in the blank. I'm not going to take on C4 until what move until that move until the bishop moves I saved myself a move and now we're working with an IQP IQP scenario okay yeah that's the pawn structure we're working with let's get developed here um, isolated queen pawn so so what, what's what's the story here? What's going on? The time's continuing to tick, of course. I'd really like to get my knight here. I'm wondering if knight c6 uh, is best or, or this. But I have to be fearful of that move, maybe. All right, let's do this one. Um, all right, let's get there right now. What's the most important square in this position? d5. And for which color? White or black? Or both? Both. White needs to make sure they keep pressure on this square and maybe threaten to be playing d5. I don't know if castling was most accurate. I wonder if a3 would have been best. See, this is, this is now kicking my knight away to a square that I am pretty sure he wanted to go to. So I don't know that that was best more common move to see would be a, a rook to c1 or rook to e1 but white is uh... white is continuing to be a pest keeping pressure on d5 okay well, playing with the purpose for sure and i wonder if i could simply trade a little bit it's usually not a bad idea to do just that if you're fighting against an isolated pawn, so reduce some dynamic possibilities that white may very well have. This is the only problem I'm needing to solve. Get him working. Still looking to complete development. White's last move. Well, now white white is fully developed, so I'm considering knight takes and then b6 with bishop b7, but I have some some worry of some sacrifice on this square as soon as I move my bishop. Should I really be concerned about that? Maybe I should be more concerned about my time. I definitely don't want to go here. Just kick the bishop away, and then what am I going to do with this clown? I should probably take... I don't want to allow a ram structure either. I don't want to allow... You know... I, I still want to play where it's... Where I have this square vacant. 
I want, I want, I want to have this square open. Um, I think here, let's see here, 95, bishop here, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, I move away, knight here. You know, maybe, maybe I, I'm going to just have to be okay with that. <laughs> My opponent would end up with more points, would end up with, um, get a rook in two pawns for the minor pieces. Okay. All right. I'm actually fine with that. I really like having my bishop here. I wonder if white should have still waited. You know, I think this would be a move I would want to do, and maybe then take, if anything. But my plan here is to still finish development. This is a potential liability. This is a, a hanging pawn structure. I think some some people get a little bit more technical about it. They don't call it maybe a hanging, hanging pawn structure until they're both on the fourth rank. But uh, I, I tend to just kind of view it as a hanging pawn structure as is as it is right now whether it's like this or both on the fourth rank so okay i'm pointing right here i have the bishop pair it's an open position my rook belongs on this half open file we're about a minute off right here i have the very common natural retreat to preserve the bishop and still watch out for any knight hops into my territory so knight e4, instinctually I'm thinking about bishop e7. Let's go there. There's still this move, but I don't believe it's really amounting to too, too much. I'm really, I'm going to be fine with that. Queen to c7 is threatening the bishop. Um, I could offer a queen exchange, and I'm almost always a fan of that. Uh, I think it's also one of the better moves in this position. Maybe I could now think about transferring over here and one day maybe starting to get both my bishops on these adjacent diagonals. We've talked about that before. They function very well. Uh, adjacent diagonals, those, those bishops. So he's the last clown that needs to do something. It's the last piece not working. So we're going to go, okay, maybe there's some issue here when the knight moves. Are there any unprotected pieces? Let's just make a move here. I still just want to get all my pieces working. This is weakening this diagonal. Let's get this rook working first. And maybe I want to get in this pawn break. Well, actually, yes, because right now this bishop is potentially vulnerable. e5 is not long off from coming, and well, I have to watch out for this rook planting in my territory. If I do this now, rook here is... A little bit of a bug however that drops this pun however I don't have a lot of time hmm. I'm just gonna go here I just I really just don't want to deal with the rook rook to b5 move and now if I do this there's bishop here let's go here scare the knight a little bit is he scared bishop here I go here and then after bishop takes I take here I don't want this bishop to take and be on my queen I was thinking bishop here, queen here, but bishop takes is then on my queen. I want to. I would really be in favor. Oops, <laughs> what was I going to say? I would really be in favor of having both sets of minor pieces off the board with the position stripped like that. Let's go back. Am I missing anything? I think it should still be all right. Let me finish that thought. Major piece ending alone. Okay, this is everything's crumbling now. I have my pick. This is a time problem. I imagine what I was going to say again major piece only position means that uh, I'm, I'm still the better side because of the, I have the better structure more pieces being traded and then these guys are just sitting targets all right now let's just trade 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 is the plan just take out this knight take out this pawn Yeah, there's some some things that I could be pointing out. Well, I'll be end up reiterating, but uh, as soon as we got under a minute, it's the the quality certainly goes down for both of us. All right, good game. Let's go back. Let's flip. Let's see how things look from your perspective. So again, this is the Carol Khan defense exchange variation, and with C4 we now call it. The Panov Bodvinik attack. There's Bishop G5. I believe you have um, many choices here. Bishop G5, 
Knight f3 is pretty common. c5, I don't know how common it is, but I have seen that before, immediately going for a structural change. But okay, you went with this. I break it, and I'm wondering if maybe even now there's this move. I believe there, there still would be. One of the things that I could say is you'll want to be on the black side a bit careful about deploying your queen knight too early because of this c5 move with bishop to b5. Capturing on this c6 square is a fa it tends to be um, a favorable structure for white, I'm pretty sure. With c5, bishop here, taking out the knight, the next pawn break black would really like to get in would be e5, but that becomes more difficult to manage. You pretty much, maybe a better way to state it is that you want to be in a position to meet c5 with b6, but if you're making a capture on c6, you're not going to be able to challenge the c5 pawn, the pawn that's in your territory, as easily. But uh, we never even went down that road, did we? And I'm not capturing until the bishop moves, that way I save a move. He had to move twice before he's on c4. And here, instead of doing the more natural castling move, I think a3 might be more accurate. Keeping my knight out of this d5 square, it's not so easy for me to get to this square. If you play a3, maybe that's better instead of castles. And now you're kicking me to a square that I wanted to go to. Maybe there's even something better at this point. Maybe the queen here immediately. Consider that. As it stood in the game, what did you do? a3, and then the queen came here, and then I took. Maybe an immediate queen to b3 would be a, a small improvement. G again, just seeing some rough thoughts here, and maybe at this point you need to be posting up to this e5 square. This is, this is quite common moves. I was pointing out some earlier, earlier here, some fairly natural moves for both sides. Okay, a3 was one suggestion, but I was pointing out that once you're castled, you could be playing your rook to e1. I pointed out his his spot, just these open or half open files, but also when we look at the minor pieces, this is a common follow-up as well for this king knight. Once he's on f3, that next square he looks to go to is e5. And maybe even in some lines c5, not necessarily this knight, but the e5 and c5 squares tend to be good ones. The e5 square is more difficult for black to cover, of course. There's always b6 that could kick away a, a minor piece, but it's not so easily done over here with f6. Weakens the diagonal, king position, etc. But this this is maybe a good move to be running with. That's what I'm getting at right here. Instead of instead of kicking my knight, maybe even maybe even throwing the knight in there, or at this point right here, even after the capture, to play knight e5 right now. I think there's there's no I think the I think I, I start to be better as soon as you're taking my knight out. And that these these really start to be more more so a liability than anything else. I'm thinking knight e5, and if I do this as I was citing in the game, to capture here and go into a position, an unbalanced position where rook and rook and two pawns versus two minor pieces. I'm not sure. Um, or if, if you're not going to go forward with that, still just play your knight here. And if bishop here, maybe you maybe you make some more strengthening moves like rook to e1 or rook to d1, improve your position in that way, and maybe a little bit later that tactic becomes all the more powerful. Like if my rook wants to go elsewhere, then like knight e5, bishop here, maybe you move your rook to e1 or rook to d1. Maybe maybe a little bit later this tactic will be powerful or some tactic immediately on e6. So just some food for that. I think I'm quite comfortable here with the bishop pair and having the rooks ideally placed. This diagonal is weakened and we're just really down on time at this point. Beyond repair. So, okay. I'm not sure really what more to add beyond that. But, uh, alrighty, good game.